Honestly, my takeaway is less on the Texas side and more on the Oklahoma side. Oh, man. That's not nice. That's not fair. But continue. Why don't you go first yours. with Texas then? Uh, Why Texas don't you go is first really with good. Texas? Tell me what your thoughts are on Texas. Um, Quinn Ewers looked off for a chunk of this game, found himself as the game wore on, ran the ball well. Uh, I think Pete Kwiatkowski's defense, especially those friggin' linebackers, those guys are everywhere. Colin Simmons, Anthony Hill, those guys, like, so good. Um, and we can, yes, I think you're right to say that the the more interesting talking point might be what's going on with Oklahoma and the injuries and the quarterback situation, the offensive situation, and the receivers and the passing game. I think that's all correct. But what Texas was able to do in taking care of business against what I still think is a really good defense at Oklahoma and absolutely leave no doubt. A lot of teams have left out. Good teams, quality teams, supposedly great teams have left out against probably lesser teams. Texas left no doubt. And it was somewhat of a slow start, but they generated turnovers. They scored off of those turnovers. They leaned, they sat, they suffocated. You're right to sort of put Texas as 1A right now because they are the team in the SEC, and they're the only team in this moment, likely, depending on ties, Texas A&M, fight Aggies, who are playing those upper percentile games, that they're I playing mean, those complete games. I, I In the immediate aftermath of this game, I drew a comparison in my mind between what Ohio State did to Iowa and what Texas did to Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And it kind of feels dirty to compare Oklahoma to Iowa, but that's frankly just where the offense is at. This is a bad offense. Yeah. And more than anything, you can look at the numbers. You can understand full well that their top five wide receivers are hurt, whatever it is. Um, they're clearly still going through some sort of transition. They yank Jackson Arnold. They put in the backup. Um, what I am left with is this feeling of hopelessness with their offense. Sure. It didn't matter what the score was. If you watch that game for any period of time, 10 minutes, whatever, couple drives, every drive was the same for Oklahoma. Every drive was the same. Every play was the same. Every passing play was the same. Snap the ball, drop back has a second to look around, nobody's open, dance around in hopes of maybe finding a seam to run through. That mm -hmm. was the offense. That was it. On occasion, they hit a play, great. But 34-3 to three was your final, and honestly, that makes it seem closer than it was. As I watched that game, I wanted, as somebody who was pretty high in Oklahoma coming into this game, just because of the rivalry aspect, not because of the offense, but right. these games have always defied logic. The Red River games. You know this. They're always close. Most most often they're close. And so I was expecting that we would see a little bit more fight from Oklahoma. Th this was a hapless offensive effort, and I don't know where they go from here. I suspect if you get a little bit healthier out wide, that will help, but you still have to have somebody throwing the ball. And a plan. And a line. And a plan. It, and, and that was the other thing, too. As I kind of posted some stuff online, there were a number of Oklahoma people who who did chime in and say, that was actually their biggest problem with it. Their biggest problem was they know what they're up against given injury situations. Right. They know what they're up against given it's a good team on the other side in Texas with a really solid defense. But the sense of not knowing what the plan is makes it really hard to feel good about anything. Agreed. And so I I don't know, man. I, I don't know what to make Oklahoma. We knew that the schedule was going to be brutal coming into this year. That is no great surprise. But... I think we all expected that this team would be in a much, much better place than it is right now on offense. It just, it seems like they're playing with a, what we think is a good defense, yeah. but in a very Iowa sense, no offense. None there's also, of. this is, Brent Venables has been there for years now. So there's levels to this, right? You take over a team, you try to make it worth work with whoever's there and any transfers you bring in, you see what you have, you see what you don't have. You hit the portal some more. You recruit super hard. You, you know, is it a quarterback thing? Is it a line thing? Lines are hard to replace uh, via the portal. But, like, you build, right? You you plug in gaps. You figure out what kind of team you want to be. You bring in Jeff Levy. Okay, you want to be, like, a pace, Lane Kiffany, that, like, that kind of system. That's what you want to be. Great. Let's find the next guy who believes in something similar, and let's find a quarterback yeah. who fits that. Oh, it's Jackson Arnold? Great. He's going to run a similar type system? Great. Who's the coordinator? Oh, it's... Seth Luttrell, we're going internal with it. Okay, are they running the same thing? No, yes, kind of, sort of. Like, 
it just seems like the it's tapering off and yeah. injuries are a big deal with it. But if you're Brent Venables and you're recruiting super well and you're a transfer destination, which they should be, Oklahoma always should be, it's a huge deal, it's a huge program, and this is what like they look like in year three after benching their five-star blue-chip quarterback of the future and sort of abandoning, essentially abandoning that path for the program. And he's gone, by the way. He's, he's going to leave after yeah, the oh, season. Yeah. He's, I mean, that's it's not official, official, obviously, but I, I think we can see the writing on the wall because that's right. where college football is. Jackson Arnold's going to leave now. And so you've alienated that option. Right. And he has recruited fairly well. Obviously, right. as you as you said, you know, he's been able to make it something of a transfer destination for guys like Deion Burks or whoever, right? I mean, it's still Oklahoma, but on some level, yeah, that does start to wear off. And if they look like this the rest of the way against the SEC, I mean, this is just really bad. It was really bad against your biggest rival. And this is the kind of stuff that drives people crazy when you lose to your rival like this. And it's it's an ideal situation, right? If Brent Venables is going to recruit a defense, if he's going to build up depth, if the talent level is going to be super high, it should be crazy attractive to the best offensive coordinators, the best transfer quarterbacks. The And I know it's not attractive if you know Jackson Arnold is the obvious starter. The best transfer receivers, like the best up-and-coming offensive linemen in high school, like Oklahoma should be it. And even in the move to the SEC, in year three, there's this kind of fall off. I don't know, man. It's pretty worrying. I mean, the vibes at Oklahoma are bad. Yeah. And I think it's meaningful to say that they're worse at Oklahoma right now, at least from the sentiment that I've gotten. You can you guys can yell at me if I'm wrong about this. Right. From from just kind of the straw polls that I took. It seems like it's way worse at Oklahoma than it is at Florida. It has been mm-hmm. horrible at Florida, but at least it feels like they fought in this game against Tennessee. Right. And I, I again I maintain that that Florida has gotten better and, and is not I as think- bad as many people might think, given the narratives that are out there. Um, but Oklahoma just feels different right now. Yep. And it's not it's not a good thing. It's not good at all.